So I'm going to uh, go with the first slide to ask about the very basic uh, question that you may all know the answer, either in orangutan or chimpanzee or uh, with the gorilla. But I'm emphasizing here my experience with the orangutan as the only Asian great apes living in Indonesia. Human and, human and orangutan conflict is occur when the needs and behavior of orangutan impact negatively on the goals of human or when the goal of human negatively impact the needs of orangutan. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Correct me please, Ian and other orangutan expert. And what are the causes of orangutan conflict? Uh, we all know it happens also in chimpanzee and gorilla, the habitat destruction and loss, including the forest conversion into concession, mining, and now the oil palm plantation. And um, sadly, I mean, uh, PHVA in 2004 found uh, results saying that 70% of the orangutan is living in non-protected area. So they live in here, in here. It's not in the protected area in here. Um, and this map, as an example, I'm showing you that TNC is a working a, a focus area where you can see all the overlapping habitat between, be, uh, overlapping uh, the multiple use uh, landscape, overlap with the orangutan's habitat. So this is orangutan habitat is overlap with oil palm and the settlement, and this is the orangutan habitat is uh, overlap with palm oil, with mining, with timber estate. And this is the oil palm, proposed oil palm, and then this orangutan habitat, again, with the other uh, use. This is not protected area. I made mistakes when, when I asked the GIS guy uh, uh, draw the, the map. Because brow area hasn't got any protected area. So every single step that you take is contained either mining, either coal, or its potential for oil palm development. Um, this is the Kalimantan White Survey that maybe you already read uh, Eric Mayer and friends uh, study. It's about a survey and interview-based survey about the Brampton presence and the conflict occurred in, uh, in this area throughout Kalimantan. TNC worked in collaboration with um, 18 NGO and doing the interview. And this is what they found that with, from, with 1,007 1,701 direct encounter, and then they say that okay, the 13% is new finding from the, the P, you know, from the PHVA that in 2004. This is um, they conducted this result, uh, this survey during 2009 and 2010. And. Um, and this is from this map I draw, this is the reaction for the conflict. It's also in the, in the, in the paper in the PLOS Biology. So reaction to, con reaction to conflict according to the interview. So like 76%, uh, they just try to chase the orangutan away. This is what they say. And this is what 7% they try to kill. And 4% they attempt to kill. And 13% they scare the orangutan or they chase them away. And if we, if we go to each province, so this is, the numbers that come from each province. So West Kalimantan, Central Kalimantan, and East Kalimantan. East Kalimantan get a uh, least uh, problem, a uh, least conflict. It doesn't mean that because it's least conflict there, but because of the sample size. It's, uh, it's not as, as, as big as sample size in the other province. Okay, so, and then, this is the result. I'm taking this uh, 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 photo from my colleague. And this is the result of the habitat overlap. This picture is here showing the female orangutan with the baby. Uh, so wander in the, in, the, in the human settlement, try to find food. This is near the oil palm plantation. And the right, the right side, I think maybe you know, this is the Sumatran orangutan. After he ate the um, durian in the, in the, in the human, in the human, plant, uh, in the human settlement as well. So I don't believe that one of you wants to encounter either in this one or in this one. And this is what I'm, I'm really sorry. I have to apologize. This is this, this is really disturbing pictures. But I want to show you this is real happened in Indonesia. This was this was taken by other NGO. But I would I would like to share to you this is what happened. It's really uh, sad to see that uh, either they're brutally beaten or they're just gonna be buried alive when they found wonder in 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 oil palm plantation. So 
as an illustration in two days according to the the worker one orangutan can 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 destroy at least one up to two hectares by eating the young the young shoot of the palm and when he ate them it's gonna kill the whole plant and if we calculate with the money in one hectares you can you can i mean the company plant like 143 trees and then if you calculate one tree it costs like seven seven dollar and these people this worker they only earn for a month is about like 124 dollar but the loss if they have to replace they have to pay the company for the loss because this is area they have to be responsible one worker has to be responsible for two i'm just gonna move the picture uh, one one worker has to be responsible to one up to two hectares. So let's say if they have to responsible for two hectares, mean that the loss that he has to pay is 115. So instead of like uh, having another problem with the company, they just they just kill the orangutan and they think they solve the problem. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And this is the orangutan I found in the one of the oil palm plantation. Um, like two months ago and this is the one uh, he got she, she got bitten by and this is what she what she did to the to the plant and sadly after after five five days and she, she died <clears throat> and i found also four babies orangutan as a, uh, that they kept as a pet in a different area in, in the, inside the old plant, 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 plant plantation i i just feeling sad because it kind of dilemma for me uh, this is this is uh, this is illegal. But when I call the Red Introduction Center, they say no, we don't have the place to receive this animal. And then when I call the company, I say, look, you have to find the place and find uh, and report that to the, fo the, the forestry officer. They say uh, no, we don't we don't want to deal with them because in, in uh, 2009 we already transfer five orangutans with their help and they charge us very uh, high amount of money like three thousand for for one orangutan for the transfer so um and the owner of course they don't have enough money even they know it's illegal they say that just take them away with you it's not my problem i mean it's you are the one who said that it's illegal and you know you know how to deal with that and just take them away i wish i could take them away and put my back and bring them home and this is what i i experience uh about tackling, well, tackling, maybe it's not the right method, but there's no right or wrong in the method, but this is the way that we try to tackle the, the, the conflict when I work at the reintroduction center and also uh, when I work with TNC. Now, this is, there is a two, two, two method about tackling the conflict to date. Yeah, the traditional method, they ch to chase and they threaten the animal and they're shouting or put in a fence and it didn't work now because the orangutan is starving and they're clever than well, the clever than people, maybe, and they, they still they still see still food, still food and destroy the plantation. And the second is the translocation. I mean, translocation is very really, is going to be the last option because it's very it has a very it has limitation and problem. You can read that it's costly. It needs special equipment and uh, also needs special medication to sedate the the animal and. As you, as you read in here in the slide, I mean, people who, who, who can use the gun has to get the permit and it's really costly and they have to renew that per year. So I don't think so everyone wants to act. Well, NGO or, or oil palm company wants to, wants to deal with, with this kind of, of, of stuff. They, they, they always ask like their introduction center to do it, but the introduction center is only have one. And if, if this, these things happen in several oil palms, so it has to be in uh, it's a, it takes a long time to, 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 to solve the problem and also because um, uh, to order the, the anesthetic is really hard as well because you need you need to arrange all the paperwork I don't know now I don't know now this situation now but this has happened in the, in the past so and the other thing is underestimating for the body weight sometimes because I mean we used to deal with the animals in the cage so you know, we, know, we know exactly we weigh them every month so we know exactly, but when they're in the, in the forest, and it happens when you misunder, when you underestimate them and you date them, and they fell off, and they didn't wake up any, they didn't wake up anymore, or if you just miss to capture them because the tree is too high, and then you miss them and they fell off and they die. Um, well, 
This is to give you an illustration about what happened in central Kalimantan uh, from my, my friend's slide for the rescuing program. So you know how, why it costs a lot of money just to save one orangutan. So they have to do this. And then this is, I think, uh, sorry. So this is, I, this is why I say that it's possible that we we didn't, we didn't put the net in the right place or we, we didn't catch, catch them, so they just go and die. But this is, this is successful rescue and translocation. And then they have to do that, they have to use like the helicopter to, 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 to remove this animal from one place to the other place which they, they think is safer as well. Um, yeah. Okay, so there has there are limitations and challenges which I, I try to write in here. I mean, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, please uh, correct me. And the traditional method, well, I said it didn't work, but sometimes it worked in a human settlement or plantation, but not the bigger area in the oil palm, the palm plantation, bigger than 5,000 hectares, because it's, the area is too huge and not many people can do it. And sometimes they scare the they, they afraid of orangutan, they just run away. And then company said that I interviewed the, the staff in the company and the head of the plantation said they're not focused on orangutan, they don't have enough resources, they don't have enough money. And the government, I mean, in one, in one area, once they got the permit, they have to allocate the area where they have, where it has the high conservation value. But uh, the head of the plantation said that, well, the, your government, the government is still charging us the same amount as a, as a production area. So it's just a waste for me, for us. We, didn't, we don't want to pay. So we want to call it as abandoned land. So let the govern, government just uh, manage this land. Uh, it's still not clear now, but uh, we try, we'll, we'll bring the, this discussion with the Minister of Forestry and try to find a good solution. Um, and the cost of the translocation, of course, will be charged to the company. So that's why the company said that, well, if one orangutan $3,000, and then how, and we, uh, you have a lot of orangutan here, how much money do we have to pay? And uh, number four is about lack of knowledge about orangutan as endangered species. I mean, it's, it's sad. When I talk to the people, I talk to the, to the, the, with this, the very strange age, and some of them say maybe only 10% knows that, okay, I know that orangutan is endangered. And they came from Java, and in, in Indonesia, in Java Island. I mean, we think that we know better than people who's living in the, in the other island, but maybe because we get an access more with the newspaper or in the, in the own TV, or maybe they, just, maybe they just lie to me. I don't know, because I'm just, I'm just trying to answer them and then say, do you know about the orangutan? Do you know about them that they're endangered? No, they say, they, same, it's, a, it's a monkey, they say. So we call it apes, but it's, it's the same monkey. So they, they, they said it's the same monkey with the, like orangutan with the macaques, it's, there's, there's no difference between macaques and, 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 and orangutan. They didn't know also the, the status has become endangered, the population has declined, and it's protected by Indonesian law. So workers tend to kill orangutan and if, because they think they, they solve the problem. They don't report, they, they just report to the foreman. So the foreman knows about it, but not the head of the plantation. Because of that, yeah. Because if one worker got a problem with the orangutan, come and destroy the plantation, the area where he's responsible to, and then he's, he, has, he has to pay. There's no argument anymore. He has to pay, they're gonna cut the money from his salary. So maybe he only bring like $20 to cover his living, he, he and his family living expenses for one, one, one month, which is not enough. I mean. And number five is the expensive equipment, like I said, the blow, blow, gun, blow pipe gun is very expensive. And at the time, we have to, to import them from Germany because this, uh, yeah, it's hard to find I mean, in, in, in the nearest country, in Singapore or in Malaysia. And Next is the status of the translocation area. Sometimes it's not well assessed. They think, okay, there's a forest. They don't do the habitat assessment. They say there's a, there's a forest because the government authority said, okay, you can, you can release them here, just bring them here, and put the chopper there, and then that's it. I mean, it said, and they didn't do any monitoring at, at all. So once they release, because they said, this is a wild animal, which is true, but you, you, need to know, you need to know as well, because you move this animal for that, from that house to another house, and we don't know what the, what's the fate of the animal after release, after translocate. 
Uh, and then there's no report in corp writing, at least in the area where I where I work. Incident by orangutan. Well, I, silently they're gonna talk to each other, but not not officially because when I ask the workers and the staff, they say to who. To whom we have to report it, and where's the form? Do we have to sign? Are we going to be put in jail if we report something? Because it's, if you say this in danger, it means that you do a crime. I said, oh no, it's difficult to explain. Uh, and there is a number of technical guidance already been compiled, and uh, and they call it patch management practice. But I mean, I mean, I think each uh, big oil pump company they 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 develop their own and they apply that their own but there's no data sharing how they implement them and how they're monitoring that and how they how's the evaluation um, if I can make a recommendation if I can make a recommendation so this is I really want this is very basic things and I think it's maybe easy to people to follow and Last demand, I don't know, but if I can make a recommendation, I'm gonna say, okay, do now, because the 70% of the orangutan population is living outside the protected area. And please do that in a mining area, in the oil palm area, and also in the concession. If you need to write a memo to MOU, the Memo of Understanding with Minister of Forestry, and please do that, because we need to know how many are there in each place, so we know how to save how to save this animal? Maybe we cannot save them all, but at least we can we can save some of them. And uh, based on my my experience as well, the survey on local per, uh, in local community perception and also the staff, because some of them know that orangutan are uh, is protected by law, and some of them they didn't know anything. They say, oh, orangutan, oh, is that the one who has the has the tail? It's along the, you can find along the river. I say, no, this purpose is monkey. No, it's no, it's no orangutan. Um, and number three is the research on orangutan behavior in this area because I believe it kind of like changed their behavior because I saw they play more on the ground and they think to eat anything edible to eat and well we need a long-term research on it I mean I know uh, doing research on orangutan is really time-consuming and also we need money to to do this but we need to do this to get the answer. We can help the, 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 the to, to, to develop a solution to conserve the animal. And develop the, con the conservation management plan for managing the orangutan that live in the company's area. I mean, some companies said, that, okay, you make it and you do it. I said, that, okay, and we give, you, we give you money to do it. And I said, that, okay, let's make an agreement. And some said, that, What's, what for? We know, okay, that's orangutan there. We're gonna leave them live there. We're gonna leave them live peacefully in the fragmented for us. We're not going to do anything. I said, no. I mean, you need to involve in this work because this is your area. We're not going to be here for the 25 years you got the permit to, to, to run uh, the oil palm company there. And uh, the next is the creating corridor to connect the restoration area within the oil palm company to the, to the several fragmented forest as well inside the area to the adjacent forest nearby. I know it's not easy. Uh, creating the corridor, but I think it, is, it, it could be one way, one, 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 one solution to, to let the animal just go back and forth and find the, the, the safer place if they, they've been threatened living in the, in the oil palm uh, area. And next is the public awareness and education. It's really important to tell the people and to monitor how their level of understanding about how important the orangutan and the other wildlife inside the, the oil palm plantation because this has also been asked by the oil palm company where I do the rapid survey. They said, please come and do, and do some presentation and tell us what to do and tell us about the orangutan so we can, we, we, so we know about, about, we know more about the orangutan or maybe and then we can we will, we will let them uh, alone when they come when they come in, and, 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 and when they come to see us in the, in the plantation as long as they don't eat the young palm that's that's what they say and the next is to establish the patrol unit and involve the local community and also the workers because i believe the worker especially the one who's doing the land clearing they are the one who knows about 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 this animal before they do the land land clearing well, I mean, the company said, that, okay, it's going to be expensive. This is your responsibility. You took them, you took their habitat away. So you now have to please do something, at least to contribute something to help the, to conserve this animal. And um, empowering the community in surrounding area to improve their livelihood. 
this is the same case also in Africa. And the next is the monitoring and evaluation, the implementing of the CMP and the BMP, because the, the BMP is there. It's not just, I, mean, I don't want to see the document just sitting or sitting in the bookshelf and then nobody is going to read it or just going to read it and they scan it without understand what to do. I mean, because, I mean, it takes a lot of time and money as well to develop this and we talk to the expert i mean at least we respect what, what whatever the result they produce in the book and please use it and number 10 if if possible finding the less expensive method if we have to do the translocation well try to do that less so the company willing to help and then other people also willing to help and it's not going to become a burden to the to the reintroduction center Okay, and uh, I think uh, this is for one of the examples the, the Nature Conservancy wants to develop because this is their three focus area. This is in uh, Wehia, in East Kutai, and this is Lasan, where I conduct some work, and uh, Lasan, and this is some cars, the limestone, where uh, surprisingly we found, we found uh, a group of orang uh, orangutan population living in the limestone. So this is just an example. I know it's not easy because all this area has been, has been already uh, converted as an oil palm, mining, and also the, uh, the, the logging concession. And this is my, my take home message, and I, I hope this is gonna be your home, uh, take home message as well. Can we live side by side in harmony? This is the small, the young orangutan, and this is the young, and I don't know, the answer lies to us. And you just let us help them to find the answer. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>